Secrets management with Azure Key Vault and ASP.NET Core can be a little bit tricky. However, this ends now because in this video I want to show you from scratch how you can configure secrets in your ASP.NET Core application using Azure Key Vault and also doing it the right way. And I promise you by the time you will reach the end of this video you will find any other resource out there mostly useless. Hey there and welcome to the Cold Wrinkles channel. Recently I wanted to do an experiment and I wanted to go on and configure ASP.NET Core secrets with Azure Key Vault based on official documentation and other tutorials that I found out there. First when it comes to the documentation I have to say that unfortunately it doesn't really bring you anywhere. There are just a lot of different types of redirection, small bits of information that are missing but that are actually vital and overall it's very hard to understand exactly what you need to do in order to get everything working. On the other hand, when it comes to tutorials, most of them are pretty much outdated. And those are not, well, unfortunately, they don't really work. Except for a few of them that actually teach you how to, for instance, place client IDs, client secrets and other stuff in app settings JSON. Wait, what? Because well, if you do this, you can just avoid the entire headache of having Azure Key Vault all together. It's the exact same level of security if you start to bring all this very important stuff in your app settings to JSON. So let me show you how you can do this the right way and with no headaches at all just in a few minutes. We have here an Azure resource group with all the needed resources to run an application and it's very similar to the setup that we have created during the video on getting started with ASP.NET Core and Microsoft Azure. We have obviously an app service plan, an app service, an SQL database and an application insights and everything is already set up. So we have for instance this Swagger UI and as you can see this is in the Azure website and if we run the application like try it out just to make sure that everything is working and we get here this response and then we have also this local host so we are, we are running this locally and if we go on and try it out also here let's execute and we should be able to get exactly the same result because the idea is that in the background both of the applications so no matter if i run it in the local development environment or in azure they talk to exactly the same database and we can see here we have the exact same result and this is due to the fact that we have here the connection strings in app settings of json something that we are accustomed to do almost in all applications what we want to achieve during this video is to get rid of this connection string and move it actually to our azure key vault instance so i would already just delete it and we will try to make sure that everything will work fine at the end of the video the very first thing that we need to do is obviously to create an azure key vault so let's get to work Inside this resource group, then we click then create and we search for Azure Key Vault. It should be this second one. So we click on it, then create. Now, obviously, first of all, we have the subscription and the resource group. This everything works already fine. And we have to, to give it a name. So let's take it a ZKW ASP net core. That would be it. I will leave it in the East US right now. The pricing tire, it would be okay like this. I will leave all the settings as they are right now. So I will just click on review and create give you all the information and when, uh, once everything is done then just create it. Now that the key vault is created let's go to the key vault itself and here it's everything very straightforward. What is very important for us right now is this section with objects like we have keys, we have secrets and we have certificates. Right now we will concentrate only on secrets but the idea of keys if you click here and if you click on generate new is a way to generate your own key. So for instance, if you want to use API authentication via a key, this would be a great service to actually start and use it or to generate your keys for your API. Now, what is important for us right now is this secret. And we want to create a new secret and place our Azure SQL connection string in this secret. So I will call this secret, it would be the name Azure SQL. And then here the secret value would be the connection string that we have from the app settings to JSON and everything uh, content type optional. So this is what we will leave empty. Then we can set an activation date, set an expiration date. If we don't set everything will be kind of like it will be active from now and we don't have a defined expiration state. And we have this enabled set to yes and we would be good to go. So let's just create this secret. And now we have it. We have our connection string in Azure Key Vault. Now comes the real challenge because what we want to achieve is the following. 
we want to be able to add Azure Key Vault as a configuration source in our ASP.NET Core application. But while doing this, we don't want to keep any type of secrets in our app settings.json file or in environment variables. And we also don't want to write crazy code in which we need to check exactly where we are running and doing things differently based on in which environment we find us. So let's take it step by step and make sure first of all that we can run everything locally and use the secrets in Azure Key Vault from our local development environment. To wire everything up locally, we need to make sure that we get this Key Vault URL because this is something that we will need to connect to this Azure Key Vault. So I have just copied that. Now, if we go back here to our app settings.json file, the only thing that we will need to add to our app settings.json file is the Key Vault URL. That's the only information that we will have. So I'll just add it here in my app settings so Jason, and we should be too good to go from this point of view. Now let's move over to this program.cs file, but actually I want to show you something else before we go further. The only thing that we need to be able to run everything is to have some packages installed. And here we see that we have some packages already installed, but the main that are very important for the key vault is this Azure extensions ASP.NET Core configuration secrets and then Azure Identity. And now that we are here, let's do everything that we need to connect to Azure Key Vault and to read the configuration from Azure Key Vault. So the first thing that we need to provide is this Key Vault URL. And this is what we will read from app settings. So JSON with this get section and Key Vault URL, it's exactly what we have added previously. And once we have this Key Vault URL, we also need to make sure that we will also get an Azure credential. So we'll have here this Azure credential and we will have this Azure default credential. And here is something that I would really like to talk about a little bit. Now, if you have this or if you use these default credentials, default Azure credential, if in your IDE you are already signed up and connected to your Microsoft Azure subscription, then this default Azure credential will use that sign in or that account to actually connect to the key vault. Now I have created the key vault with the same account with which I am authenticated or connected from Rider to Microsoft Azure. So everything will just work fine. Exactly the same thing works also from Visual Studio or if you're doing Java development for IntelliJ, it works exactly the same way. Now there are different types of credentials like token credentials, environment credentials, but based on my experience, I guess that the easiest or the most straightforward way to actually make everything work both in the local development environment and also in Azure Web App, in an Azure Web App, is to use this default Azure credential. And we will see just in a few minutes that we will have just to think a little bit on how this default Azure credential will be actually created when the code is actually in an Azure Web App and not in our IDE. But for now, we just use this Azure credential and we create this Azure default credential. Is we have this URL and if we have this credential, the next obvious step is to add the Azure Key Vault as a configuration source. And if you want to find out more about configuration sources and understand exactly how they work, I have another video that I have created on the topic. It's called how to keep secret strings really secret. And then we really deep dive into how configurations work in ASP.NET Core. And what we're doing here is we are just adding another type of configuration, which is from the Azure Key Vault. So the way to do this is obviously very simple. Builder, configuration, add Azure Key Vault. And Azure Key Vault is in that Microsoft extensions, ASP.NET Core, Azure uh, or, or Secrets package. And here to be able to connect basically or to add the Key Vault as a configuration source, we need to provide the URL, which we actually get here as a URI. And we need to provide this credential. And once we have all this information, our application, our ASP.NET Core application should be able to connect to the Key Vault and get and read the configuration from the secrets that we have in the key vault. And this means that what we can do is actually this var CS where we get the connection string. We don't want to, guess, to get this from the app settings to JSON anymore. Instead, we'll want to hey here builder configuration get section and Azure SQL. And please note that this Azure SQL is exactly the name that we have specified for our secret in the Azure Key Vault. And once we have the connection string, obviously, then we have builder services at DB context. That's not something that we need to change at all. So to prove that everything should work right now, I will just run the application. And you see that the Swagger UI loaded. So let's go to the products and get products. 
write out and execute. And remember, right now we don't have any connection string in our app settings or JSON file. So everything is done directly from the Azure Key Vault. And as you can see, we can still get the data from the database. So this means that the configuration was read successfully from our Azure Key Vault secret. I'd say that now we are halfway through. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it because this will make it easier to discover for others. And if you are for the first time on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you are always notified whenever something new happens on this channel. Coming back to our stuff, we have to say that the main problem right now is that if we deploy the application in this moment to Azure, it will not work. It will fail on startup when Azure will try to start up the application. And the main reason why this is happening is because the application is not able to construct a valid Azure default credential when it runs in Asia. Therefore, we need a way to tell Azure Key Vault that hey, be a nice guy and please let this ASP or please let this Azure web app connect to Azure Key Vault and read the secrets and the different keys. And to do this, we need to introduce the concept of managed identity. I know it sounds scary, but in the end, a managed identity is nothing else than a way, an identifier based on which we can instruct Azure Key Vault to allow, for instance, our Azure web application to read the secrets from the key. Vault. So let's go to our Azure web app and here if you scroll a little bit you see that under settings we have this identity played and here is where you can add or manage the managed identities for this Azure web app and you see that we have these two types of identities like the system assigned and the user assigned managed identity. What we'll do here right now we'll set the system assigned managed identity to on and then if we click on save something like this will pop up. And the only important thing that we need to understand from here is that we have this object principal ID and this is something that we will need. So I'll make sure that I will copy this to my clipboard. A system managed identity is just for one single resource. And when we delete that certain resource, that managed identity will also be deleted. On the other hand, a user defined managed identity is something that we can create from scratch and we can assign to different Azure resources. And when those resources get deleted, the Azure managed identity or the managed identity that we have created, it still remains. Therefore, system managed identities are very useful when we want to have very granular permissions access for just one resource. On the other hand, user-defined managed identities are very important or can be very useful when we want to have a more widespread or usable permissions throughout our entire Azure ecosystem. Therefore, let's go now to our key vault and as said, we need to create a permission for this managed identity to be able to have access to read the secrets. And if we are here in this key vault, there is this access policies blade, which is very important. Don't make the mistake to think that you need to create an access control policy that won't work. You need to create an access policy for that managed identity. And here we see that we already have a policy, obviously for my user, because I have created this entire Azure key vault. And what we'll want to do is to create here a new policy. The first thing that we need to do here is we need to look into exactly what type of permissions do we want to have. And here we have permissions for keys. Right now we are don't we are not interested in keys, so we are interested in permissions, and we are also not interested in certificates. Now the minimum access that we want right now for our application to be able to read or to get the different secrets. In our case, we just have one to list them and to use them. We will need to have this get and list permissions on. Uh, those or, or on this specific key vault. And then if we click next, you see that here we can search by object ID. And here is where we paste in the object ID that we have copied earlier in our Azure app service from the managed identity. And you'll see that you or this application will pop up here. So we choose this application and then we click on next. There are some things that we can still review, but they are not really important right now. Review everything. So we then just create this permission. And just in a few seconds, as you can see, this permission uh, for this Azure web application with the secret permission for get and list has been added to our key vault. Now we are really done and I will use the magic of videos. And while you look at my very ugly face, I am already deploying the application to Azure and I guess that by now it is done. So let's get and check it out. So on our app service, let's click on browse right now. And obviously we have here a 404 because we don't have anything here. But if we navigate to the Swagger UI, we see that it loads correctly. And now the supreme test is to check if everything still works. 
because right now remember we don't have any connection string in our app settings to json file anymore and indeed we got exactly the same result so we are still connected to the database but now this happens via azure key vault because we read the connection string from the key vault and not from app settings to json now let's summarize the steps that you need to perform in order to configure your asp.net core application to use azure key vault the very first thing obviously is you need to create an Azure Key Vault and add your secrets to it. Then you need to add the Key Vault as a configuration source in your ASP.NET Core application. In your ASP.NET Core application, use the default Azure credential to construct a credential that's able to read and connect to your Azure Key Vault. Then obviously make sure that you create a system managed identity on your web application. And last but not least, you need to make sure that that managed identity has the correct access policies on the Azure Key Vault so that it is able to read the secrets from the Key Vault. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and like it so that others might discover it easier. And if you are for the first time on this channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are always notified whenever something new happens on this channel. Also, if you have any question and if you want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. And if you think that others might find this video useful, don't be shy once again and feel free to share it with your friends in your social media wherever you think that there might be anybody that would be interested in this video, just share it and I am sure that they would be thankful. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.